league with a battle between LCIA methods. The idea for this video came from the practical class we had. In the slides, the professor had used the CML baseline method and in the class had used Proceed. So, I thought, what would be different in the final results? And here I am to show you some results. An LCIA method is understood as a set of LCIA impact categories in terms of environment. There are numerous methods to study the impact categories, including CML, baseline and non-baseline, Echo Indicator 99, ILCD, Receipt, among others. And today I will only refer the CML and Receipt. CML method was created in 2001 by the University of Leiden in the Netherlands. The method is defined for the mind point approach and is divided into baseline and non-baseline. The CML baseline behind most common impact categories used in the LCA method and each impact category group could be arised with different names, for example in ecotoxicity. This term is divided in three, the freshwater aquatic, marine aquatic and terrestrial ecotoxicity. In terms of receipt, it was first developed in 2008 through cooperation between four institutions. The receipt method is an updated version uh, of the combination between Echo Indicator 99 and CML. This Echo Indicator 99 is considered an other method and presents a limitation that is assumption that all emissions and land use and all the damage resulting therefrom also occurs in the hero, except only damage with long distance dispersion, for example climate changes. It came to replace the Echo Indicator 95, that is the first method based on the endpoint approach. It was also developed with the aim of simplifying the results of the interpretation and weighing and calculations of the indicators. The receipt method distinguishes two levels of indicators. The first one is the mind point indicators, where it are included 18 categories. The other one is the endpoint indicators, where the different uh, impacts are converted and aggregated in three different categories. An endpoint method tries to look uh, for an environmental impact at the end of a cause effect chain, while the mean point method looks at the impact earlier, before the endpoint is reached. Here you can see three letters that correspond to three different perspectives the individualist, that is a short term with an optimist view that technology can avoid many problems in the future. Hierarchies, that is a consensus model and is often considered to be the default model. And egalitarian, that is considered a long term based on precautionary principle thinking. Some of the advantage of this receipt method behind considered the broadest set of mean point impact categories and does not include potential impacts from future extractions in the impact assessment, however assumes such impacts have been included um, in the inventory analysis. And this is a method that combines the scientific rigor of CML and the simple interpretation of the results like using in Echo Indicators 99. This is a very simple introduction and explanation about these two methods and I really do not are familiarized with all concepts that are used in the literature but now I will pass to the OpenLCA software. To see what would result from the variation of LCI methods I used the case study referred into the classes. So the idea was to terminate the environmental burdens of a pet water bottle with a body made of pet with a volume of 1.5 liters produced in Portugal and using pet grain weight of bottle weight for its production. Here I compared the CML baseline method using the EU25 as a normalization and weightening set and the receipt 2016 min point H using the world 2010 H. Firstly, for only one item, I analyzed the difference in the impact categories. The CML exhibits 11 indicator while the receipt exhibits 18. Only here we can see advantage over the CML method. We have a higher number of indicators and in some cases it consists of subdividing one category in two or more. One example is for CML method. It is used a trophication uh, term while in the receipt method uh, this term is divided in freshwater and marine eutrophication. 
Our example is human toxicity in case of CML that is subdivided in human carcinogenic or non-carcinogenic categories. Now, continuing to talk about uh, one only item, it is possible to see in the impact analysis that the top five for CML method was marine aquatic ecotoxicity, followed by the global warming potential, human toxicity, acidification and freshwater aquatic ecotoxicity. On the other hand, using the receipt method, it was possible to see the difference, with major impact behind the tribute to the global warming potential, followed by terrestrial ecotoxicity, water consumption, human toxicity, but more specifically non-carcinogenic toxicity, and terrestrial acidification. In terms of data normalized and weightening, the top five changed a little bit. The CML method exhibits firstly the marine aquatic ecotoxicity, then acidification, global warming impact, photochemical oxidation, and in the end, deotrophication. On the other hand, the receipt method exhibits a more amount associated to terrestrial followed by marine human carcinogenic uh, toxicities and final the global warming and terrestrial acidification. Here it is important to remember that the references used for normalization are different. Now, doing this study for 1000 bottles, it were variated the distance and mass of pet granulated factors and selected all LCIA categories available. Comparing the distance, firstly I selected the 50, 200 and 500 km values. Between methods it is possible to see that the behavior observed for each distance is similar. However, the values are higher compared to the CML method, with improves between 0.6 and 3.3%. However, with variation of mass of pet relates, we have difference between methods is identical. However, the greater the weight associated with the granulates, the higher is the environmental impact associated. So, well, after this brief presentation of data, what can I conclude? These methods are all new to me. It was the first contact I had with these, so I felt that many aspects still to be understood in order to make a better analysis of the results. About the best method to choose, um, it is a complex decision. Both are well accepted and used scientifically, so it is necessary to understand which categories are more important and which method would be more sustainable for that. I really believe that is a choice that would have to lead to a huge bibliographic study with analysis of different results or of different cases of study to understand and have a better fundamental idea about which is most appropriated choice. So, so thank you for accompanying me in this video adventure. I really expect you like it. For me, it was a pleasure to try to, to put this idea uh, in action. Uh, stay safe and see you soon.